It'll show you how to take something, for example, that you don't want to do and get yourself to love doing it, really love doing it. I'll also show you a tool if there's something you love to do that's not good for you, how to change it. And it's all done with some simple questions. So let's go to Hawaii and let's give you a little idea what it looks like and then I'll demonstrate it for you with a real person and I think you'll laugh and, and hopefully learn as well. I'll see you in a few moments. I want to give you one other little tool and it's a t tool that is so simple again. It's like my idea of profound knowledge is when you take something complex and you figure out how to make it so simple anybody can do it you can even use it immediately, it's easy, and it produces a result. Now, I'll tell you what the tool is. It's about how to change the quality of any experience you have in a matter of seconds. Any experience. Love making, a business situation, a meal, exercise, anything. And the tool like I'm going to talk to you about is called the Quality Quantifier. And what it really is about is how to increase the quality of any experience you have. I developed this tool because People have used like the personal power product, for example, around the world and made major changes in their weight. For example, how many of you use that product to lose some weight? Let me see your hands. Now, do people overeat every moment they're alive? Yes or no? They only eat when they're in an overeating what? State. When you get in that state, you lose all your consciousness about what to eat, about how to eat, about how much to eat. It's gone because you're in a state of such urgency. And when people are trying to make their life better, you have to be able to do it by being conscious. But what happens when the urgency rises, your consciousness disappears, and all of a sudden you lose all of your faculties. So I start thinking, have I ever been in a state where I felt like I had to eat? But then something broke the pattern, and I forgot about it for a while. How many of you had that experience? You thought you were starved, something broke your pattern, and you lost the urge. It's not that you can't manage your behavior, it's you're not managing your urges. Because if the moment of the urges you took something to take control of it, you could have changed it all. So in order to do that, I was at a friend's house, and I was thinking, okay, how do I help people manage those urges? There's so many tools. I want to create something so simple anybody can do it. And I thought, there's certain levels of urges. They have different levels. Some urges you feel driven. Some urges you feel like no matter what, you're going to have it right now. Like how many of you have ever broken some of your own health rules because you've gotten such an urge state? Okay? But other times, it's like you could have that food you think you're normally addicted to, it's sitting in front of you and you don't even care. Have you had that experience too? And not because you were full, just because you weren't into it. So I said, well, let's quantify that. There's a quality of experience, there's a quality of our state where we follow through, where we follow through a little, where we don't follow through at all, and where literally no one can make us follow through, make us eat it. And I've, everyone has this capability. It's all a matter of manipulating our focus, our perception, the meaning we attach to things. So I was at this friend's house, and they had some banana bread sitting on their uh, coffee table. And I looked at the banana bread, and I asked this lady there who I know, I said, what's your level of desire for that banana bread right now on a scale from 0 to 10? She looked at it and went, maybe a 4. I said, well, what would it take to make it a 7? She said, what do you mean? I said, to make it where, right now 4, whatever that is, you've now quantified where you are. What would it take to have the desire move up to seven? Not ten, but seven. Well, you really started to really want it. She said, well, I thought about it being hot. I said, what about eight? She said, if I thought it was hot, and it just come out of like the oven, and I thought about its smells, and I, I could actually feel the chewiness in my mouth. And you could see her start to go into state. Her eyes got like this, start doing the banana. She's looking at the banana bread like this. <laughs> She's going to swoop in for it now, right? I said, what would it take it to ten? She goes, if you put chocolate on it. <laughs> I said, okay, whoa, 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 hold back now. I said, what was it take for you to get it to two? She said, to realize it's just cold and been sitting there for a while. And you could see her just drop down to it. So it's like a scale, right? I said, okay, what would it take for you to get to minus two? And she said, I couldn't do that. I mean, I like it. I said, I know you can't, but if you could do it. Whenever people say they can't do something, say, I know you can't, but if you could, they'll give you the answer. But you're persistent. She goes, I guess if I looked at the grease on the napkin it's sitting on, and I thought about that going in, and oh, oh, then I wouldn't want it at all. You could just see her whole state change. I said, what would it take to make it minus five? She said, if I saw all that grease, like, 
crumple together, like coming out my pores, like acne or something. Ugh. I said, what would it take for it to be minus 10? She goes, oh my God, if I thought it was going to make me sick. She goes, oh, that make me sick. I'd throw up. Oh my God, I'd never do it. I said, what would I be? Oh, ah. And she started to get in this really state. I said, do you want it? She goes, no, I don't want it. I said, well, come back here for a second. Imagine it being hot, moist, chewy. And she went, oh yeah. <laughs> I imagine chocolate on chocolate on it. <laughs> so no, no, come back over here. It's really cold. See, it's cold. See that? And literally, I could just move her up and down the scale. Emergency. So I'm watching this, and I'm saying, wow, this is amazing. The needle shift back and forth. And by the way, people usually, to get the minus 10, also have fear of loss. It's that they be sick, or they lose their freedom, or it would do something to them that's horrible, some form of pain. Pain, the loss of pain, the fear of loss, that pain, seems to push people through the roof for urgency. Like when you say, oh my God, I haven't eaten in 12 hours. That'll move you up there real fast. And I'm starved. At the same time, you think something's going to make you sick, you'll avoid it at all costs. It becomes that other level. So I started saying, we all have the resources inside to change where we are on the scale from one place to the other. But then I started using this thing, thinking, wow, I could do this beyond food. Most people in life have experiences where they go out and do something and see how it turns out. How silly. How stupid. So I was here in Hawaii for a program a couple years ago, and a good buddy of mine, we run together, we went out on a run. And it was a really hot day, and we were on the big island that year. And the place we ran was like where all the volcanoes have just desolate, you know, pretty made it desolate. There's no trees, there's nothing. And it was really, really hot, and there was no wind. So we went on this run, and we were just pushing it pretty good. And we came back at the end of the run, and I said, let me ask you a question. I said, how would you rate that run we just did on a scale from minus 10, worst thing in our whole lives, to plus 10, the best run ever? He said, I'd say it's like a six or a seven. And I said, that's exactly where I rated my head, too. I said, let me ask you a question. If you and I were going to go back and run again, is there anything we could have done that would have made it? If we decided it was going to be a level eight run, could we have done that? If we decided in advance it'd be a level eight run, could we have done it? He said, yeah. I said, what conditions would we have to create in our head, on our bodies? What would you have to do to make that a level eight run for you? He said, if we would have run like in unison as we run it. You know, because sometimes you went ahead and I went ahead and we went back kind of back and forth and, and sometimes we're going back here and there, you know, and sometimes we're teasing each other. But if you were running in unison, he said, that would just, that'd be an eight for me. I said, well, that's pretty cool. I've never thought of that. Yeah. I said, what would have made it a nine for you? He said, a nine. He said, we've been running in unison and we were running like doing a cadence or something, like saying something, we were doing it in unison. He said, it would just be, that would be awesome. You guys got a military background. Cadence. Right? And I said, well, what would have made it a 10? He said, we've been running our guts out, right? I mean, where we couldn't even breathe. Where at the end of it, we've been in unison, we've been cranking, and we just collapsed from total intensity exhaustion. And I said, you know what? I said, I don't know why you're always getting injured. Because he's always getting injured when he's exercising. Because the only way for you to have a level 10 experience is to push yourself beyond what is helpful and be totally anaerobic. And he went, oh, whoa. So you're totally right. So I want to have a great experience. My complex equivalent in my head of a great experience is so exhausted and I have nothing left. I said, so I've discovered in my life there are lots of ways to have a level 10 experience. There isn't just one way. So how can we have a level 10 experience but not be burned to the ground? He said, wow. Thoughtful. I said, well, if while we were running, we would like notice, you know, the water in the distance and notice the different shapes of the lava. If we would have, as we're running, looked back at each other and smiled a few times while we're running in unison, if we would have brought like a piece of music for the last part of the run that we could have turned on and we could have cranked to and it felt really good to but not been exhausted, we came with all these things and we made a level 10 run. So what I do now in life is when I'm having an experience, I ask myself, what's the quality of experience I'm committed to having? I don't wait and hope it shows up. Does that make sense? Because if you wait and see, you get what shows up. You decide in advance, what's the outcome? And the way you do that is you give a numerical number to it to start with. You say, where am I right now about doing this run? You might wake up and go, I'm at level four about doing this run. What do I want this run to be? And you may not want it to be a 10, but you probably want it to be in the 8, 9, 10, 7, 8, 9, 10 range. You say, okay, I want it to be at least a level 8. Then you ask yourself, what conditions would I have to create in myself or in the environment? What would I need to do to meet more of my six human needs? In essence, does that make sense? So what would I have to do? What would I have to notice? What would I have to appreciate? What would I have to do with myself? What would I have to think? What would I have to focus on in order for this to be a higher level experience for me? And what happens is, you then set yourself up for victory. And I came back after this run, I was so juiced, 
It's like, now I can have a great run whenever I want. I can just decide to, figure out the conditions, make it happen. I, it's, we all have this illusion that life makes us feel a certain way rather than we create the conditions within ourselves that generate our life. So false. So what you want to do is see where are you, step one, zero to ten. Step two, how do you want to feel? Describe some of those feelings. Step three, give it a numerical number. It's going to be a level eight experience or nine or whatever. Step four, what are the conditions that I can control? Not, I'll be happy if you do everything I want, and then go do that. And I'll give you an example of this also. At the same time I was there, I shared this with a group about my run with my buddy. And this one man raised his hand. He said, but running for me is a minus 10 experience. I said, why? He said, because I'll die of a heart attack. I said, have you died in a heart attack in the past? Is that how you know? He said, no, but I, I was running one time. My heart started beating out of me. I said, well, how long ago was that? He said, it was 10 years ago. I said, well, are you in better shape, worse shape? What does your doctor say? He said, oh, my doctor says I'm in really, really great shape, but I could never run again because I know what that means. I said, well, great. Tell me what it means. And so he told me what it was at minus 10. I said, what if it was only minus 3? I didn't go to plus 10. That's too big a jump. Do you follow me? One of the big things is you go, I'm going to have a level 10 experience, and you don't even know how to do a 4 yet. So you've got to go from, like, wherever you are at 1 or 2 and go to 4, and then go to 6, and then go to 8, and move your way up. I didn't take him to 10. I said, now, as long as you know you're healthy and you're running in a way that does not tax your heart, you're being totally aerobic, you're going to walk if necessary, you're wearing a heart monitor the whole time. And I said, did you do that? He said, yes. He was looking forward to it. He came back the next day. I said, what was your level of run? He said, i got to tell you, it didn't work. Everybody looked, and he said, I had a level 16 run. So I want to show you how to do this in a kind of a fun way. Let's take pizza. I think that'll be an easy example, a fun example. Who here is absolutely, totally, completely addicted to pizza? You could swallow two or three of them right now. You're so, you, I mean, nothing can stop you from pizza. That's how much you want it. A total addiction to pizza. If you have that addiction, stand up so I can see it. All right, hold it. All right, how about, how about this gentleman right here? Come on down, sir. Give him a hand. Come on down. This is Bill. Give him a hand. It's Bill. First point is you've got to recognize where you are currently about the, the task at hand, whether it's running, whether it's pizza, anything. So you're going to assign a numeric value to your experience. You're going to stand on a scale from minus 10 to what? Plus 10, where are you? So we'll say to you, on a scale, Bill, from minus 10 to plus 10, where are you around eating pizza? Plus 10. Plus 10. Is it just plus 10 or is it above plus 10? Plus 12. Plus 12. Is that about accurate? Yeah. Plus 12. Okay? So then, most people never decide in advance the level of quality, pleasure, joy, excitement, or even pain that they're committed to experiencing to a given task in advance. So the second step is to consciously describe what feelings you want to experience while doing a particular activity. The third step is to decide and quantify. You say, I'm going to give it this quality, I'm going to make it a level 10 experience, 9, whatever. The fourth step to the right here is you're going to ask yourself the question, what conditions must I create inside myself or the environment or to experience this at a level of quality, at level of whatever? Okay? What do I need to focus on, appreciate? What do I need to do with the task in order to change how I feel about it? What we'll do here with Bill is we will ask him where he is and we'll get him to move things for us and tell us what he has to do to change it on the scale. So Bill, if you imagine this is our scale from minus 10 to plus 12. We'll have to add two more here for Bill. Okay? So plus 12. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put his pizza in front of him, and he'll describe for us a little bit what are some of the qualities that he needs. So, Bill, here is a pizza, sausage pizza. Well, first off, I don't eat sausage or pepperoni. You don't eat sausage or pepperoni? I love the cheese and, and the other aspects of pizza. Cheese pizza. <laughs> <laughs> What's your level of desire for this pizza? Right now it's only a 10. It's only a 10. It's only a 10. Okay. Oh, it's not really warm. It's not really warm. Well, imagine it warm. 10. 10. Imagine it getting warmer. <laughs> imagine, can you imagine some mushrooms on it? Okay, imagine some mushrooms on it. Maybe a 12. A 12. So imagine it with mushrooms on it, warm. Mm -hmm. Some dried tomatoes. Some dried tomatoes. Dried tomatoes, mushrooms, cheese, melted cheese. 
<laughs> dripping with cheese. Dripping with cheese. Dripping with cheese. cheese. What kind of cheese? Extra cheese. Extra cheese. <laughs> What's your level of desire at that level now? My, about, about 15. <laughs> about 15. Okay, so extra cheese. Does that help him get in that state? Well, let's write down. What does he do to get it higher? Write it down in your little sheet here. To get even higher, what does he do? He adds in his mind that it's really hot. He adds in his mind that it's got mushrooms. And to get it to 15, he puts on extra what? Cheese. Look at his face when he even says it. Look at his face. Cheese. And sun-dried tomatoes. Thank you. Now, think about this pizza now. And I want you to take this pizza, if you would, and put it down, if you would, to level... Eight. Go ahead and hold it with the other hand. Level eight. Tell me, what do you got to do to make it level eight? Um, I'll say, it's not really, it wouldn't be warm. It'd be warm. And um, maybe it's just cheese pizza or... Oh, I gotta give you, I'm sorry, I gave you the wrong one. Didn't I? Yeah. There we go. Yeah, if it wasn't really warm, if it was just slightly above room temperature, maybe it'd be an eight. Slightly above room temperature, which is about what that one is. Okay, so that's an eight. Bring it down to a three. Did have pepperoni and sausage on it. Okay. Hold both of them now. It looks more attractive when he's got more. Did you see his face? Oh. I just don't want to drop it. Okay, that's fine. No problem. So make it a three and it's got sausage on it because you don't eat sausage or pepperoni. Because after all, you're one of those guys that has a pizza and a light beer. Uh, I don't drink beer either. Oh, okay, you don't drink beer either. Do you have a soft drink? Diet Coke. <laughs> before the seminar. Before I, I, I understand. I'm not on your case. I'm your buddy. <laughs> 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 but isn't that what we all do? It's not just him. Yeah, give me a big extra cheese pizza. And a light Coke. <laughs> okay, it's a sausage. Make it a zero. What you should be noticing is not just what he says. Do you see the change in his head? You see a change in his breathing, or his facial expressions? Is he in the same state, yes or no? Is he even close? Where is it now, zero to ten? Zero. zero. So zero is it's been sitting out for now. Make it minus three. Uh, it's pepperoni and sausage, and it's been sitting out for an hour, and the grease is kind of coming out of the meat. The grease is coming out of the meat. Can you picture that? Mm -hmm. Can you see that? Yeah. Yeah. And what if it was a cheese pizza, but it's still minus three? And it had also mushrooms on it, and it also had extra cheese, but it's still minus three. And it even had tomatoes, sun-dried tomatoes, but it's minus three. How do you do that? It's been sitting out for a while. How long? A couple hours. How do you know when you look at it? Um, it's kind of glazed over. I get the sugars come out from the cheese on top. It's kind of glazed over, maybe hard getting hard, the sugar is glazed over on top. Anything else that makes it a minus three? No idea. Okay, make it a minus seven. Um, I can smell the meat kind of rotting a little bit. Smell the meat rotting. Smell the meat rotting a little bit. Where is it now? Minus seven. Minus seven. To minus seven. Bring it down to minus nine. But it has no meat. It's minus nine. It has mushrooms. It has extra cheese. It has sun-dried tomatoes. And it's minus nine. fighting the urge because I'd be smelling the rancid smell of cheese in my stomach. Okay, go ahead and do that. Well, I don't want to throw up here. <laughs> but I mean, I, I would get that urge. You, you'll get the urge, but I won't let you throw up. <laughs> Tell us when you're at minus nine. You won't throw up till we put you at minus 11. <laughs> we won't take you that far. 
but you'll be real close. Tell us where you are now. Minus, minus eight. Minus eight. Take it to minus nine. What are you focusing on? Take it to minus nine. Uh, the smell. Smell of what? Like the cheese ret rotting cheese. Ooh, rotting rancid cheese. Can you see what it looks like too? And smell it? I, I, I couldn't even look at it. Can't even look at it. Go ahead and look at it while you say that. Look at it. Think pizza. That's it. Just look at it. Think pizza. Tell me when you're at minus nine. Imagine mushrooms, extra cheese. Mushrooms, extra cheese, pizza. That's it. Mushrooms, extra cheese, pizza. That's it. Mushrooms, extra cheese, pizza. Where are you right now? Scale from zero to ten. Mushrooms, extra cheese, pizza. Smelling the rancid smell. Look at the pizza when you think about it also. See it and smell it. That's it. Hang on, hang on, hang on. That's it, that's it. Mushroom, extra cheese, smell it. Smell the rancid smell. That's it. Smell the rancid smell. That's it. Smell it. Smell it. There it is. Smell the cheese. You can smell it. That's it. Smell the extra cheese. That's it. Smell it. Extra cheese. I'd like some extra rancid cheese. Where are you? Zero to ten, right? Minus ten right now. Where are you? Minus, minus nine, minus ten. Don't go to minus eleven. Don't go to minus eleven. Okay. <laughs> you want some? No, no one is. <laughs> Does that look like a fun and hopefully valuable tool? I know it's deceivingly simple, so you might say, well, you know, I don't know if that's really going to change the way I really feel, or maybe it'll change the way I feel for the moment, but it's not going to last. In fact, Lisa Gibbons, who was the person who interviewed me in the infomercial that you saw before you got these tapes, she was at that program, and afterwards she came up to me and she said, you know, how did you know he was going to change so fast? I said, because everybody does. We all have the same nervous system, and when we use it effectively, it's like a computer. When you know the right code, you can change it rapidly. It's this hypnosis we have that change has to take forever, it has to be painful, that keeps us from changing. And I said, also, I said, it'll last, or you watch. She said, well, we'll see. So we just followed up about a year later with this gentleman, Bill, and what's interesting is, not only has he not touched any pizza for an entire year, I mean, not even close, but he said, he's never touched any more cheese. And here's the best part. Is it because he can't? No, he could go back and change it tomorrow if he wants to. I'm not about taking away people's choices but he doesn't have an urge to. He doesn't have any desire is what he said. I just don't want it. Wouldn't it be nice to eliminate one of your addictions through this simple process? Now it's true if you are, like say, loving chocolate and you keep saying, I love chocolate, I just love it, I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it, and you give yourself this incantation, remember that? Or with all this emotional intensity, you talk about how much you love it all the time, and then you go to do this to change, highly unlikely it's gonna last because you're gonna be giving your brain a different message. So you have to make sure that you control your internal dialogue by creating a new incantation that supports you, and you have to make this adjustment. So I want you now to do this so you see that it really works. You can do it with food. You can do it with something that you're doing right now that's not so good, and figure out, okay, if right now my level of desire for this food is at a 9, and I don't want to eat this food or this alcohol or this whatever, how would I lower it? And don't try and go from 9 to 0. It might be too big a jump. I'll say, well, what would it take for me to only like it enough that I consider it on a zero to ten scale to be a seven or a six and really think about it and by the way the state you're in when you're asking these questions makes a big difference if you're sitting passively going well what would it take for me to feel like a seven your brain won't have the answer you got to ask a question where you're telling your brain I expect the answer you got to have certainty when you ask a question that you're gonna get the answer If you don't have certainty it won't work so put yourself in a peak state and then say okay now what would it take for me to have this be like a three a zero and write it down, and you'll find a little chart that's enclosed with this videotape that can help you track it. What about a minus two? What about a minus six? And what you'll find is exactly how to increase your desire, or decrease your desire, I should say, or increase it if you want to. And by the way, what is this really about? Quality of life. We talked about setting goals for quality of life. Here's what I want you to do. I want you not just set a goal for the quality of your life. I want you to decide and make it happen. And the way you do that is if I'm going to go on a run here on the beach, I don't want to just go for the run and see what shows up and whether I enjoy it or not. I want to decide in advance what the quality of that run is going to be for me. So if you want to take something that already feels okay or you're not inspired to do and you want to increase its intensity of enjoyment, 
You've got to say, okay, where am I right now about going on this run on the beach? Zero to ten. Well, I'm about a six and a half or seven. Okay, well, what would it take for me to be at an eight and a half? I don't know. As soon as you say, I don't know, say, I know I don't, but if I did, what would it be? Kind of change your state, you'll get the answer if you keep asking. So you're going to say, well, if I were to, like, notice what a beautiful day it is. Well, what would bring it to a nine? Well, maybe if I brought some music with me, or if I listened to one of those Tony Robbins tapes. <laughs> or something better, right? Something can put you in a good state, so maybe I feel like I'm learning while I'm running. Well, maybe I could get it to a nine and a half by doing an incantation as I'm running. I'm a lean, mean running machine. Or as I'm running, all I need is within me now. All I need is within me now. All I need is within me now, with tremendous energy and emotion. Right? If you do that over and over again, how's that going to feel? You know? All I need is an airplane to go away so I can finish this tape. <laughs> Whatever it is, you want to be saying it again and again while you're running, so you're literally programming yourself. That might bring you to a nine and a half. Maybe you go run with a friend, that brings it to a 10. The point is really simple. Don't settle for whatever life gives you. You determine the quality of your life. And the way you do it is ask this question. If I'm at level seven now, what conditions? First of all, what's the level I want to have? Maybe you don't want a level 10 run. Maybe I want it to be a nine or an eight. What conditions must I create inside myself for that to be a level nine run? What conditions? What do I have to notice? What do I need to appreciate? What do I need to believe or experience? in order to really do that. What, what do I need to add to the experience? What do I need to think about? What do I need to listen to? And if you ask that question, you'll get the answer. So I know I've dumped a lot on you.